Hey, what's up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan and today, what in the heck are we gonna do? Uh, in this video, we're gonna describe the postulates of kinetic molecular theory. Who as always, let's break that down a little bit. First thing we're gonna do, describe the kinetic molecular theory. What is it? Two, we're gonna explain how the kinetic molecular theory applies to gases. Three, we're gonna define an ideal gas and a real gas. Basically, this video comes down to my good friend here. Has anyone met him before? He is so lighthearted. He doesn't like when people make fun of his pirate's patch. Arr! Okay, so first things first. Kinetic molecular theory is just this idea that particles of matter are always in motion. For gases, this theory is based on the following five assumptions or postulates. Postulate number one. Gases consist of large numbers of tiny particles that are very far apart relative to their size. Most of the volume of a gas is empty space. Don't tell him that. He doesn't have a whole lot going on up there. <laughs> oh God. Postulate number two, gas particles are in constant, rapid, random motion. Gases therefore possess kinetic energy, which is the energy of motion. As we take a look at the sample of neon gas in a container, the particles are constantly in random, rapid motion. Postulate number three. Collisions between gas particles and between particles and container walls are elastic collisions. An elastic collision is just one in which there is no net loss of energy. Boom, you knock into one another, you knock off of one another, no net loss of energy. Boom. Postulate number four, there are no forces of attraction, nor are there any forces of repulsion between gas particles, ideally in a perfect world. Five, fifth postulate, the average kinetic energy of gas particles depends on temperature. Again, keep in mind that temperature is essentially a measure of kinetic energy. You're provided with the formula for kinetic energy in your notes and on your screen there. Although don't concern yourself with solving for kinetic energy for this unit, we'll save that when you get to physics. So as we go back to my sample of neon gas, we're currently at 55 Kelvin, which is pretty dang cold. He thinks so. But when we heat things up, to say 273 Kelvin, notice the kinetic energy or the energy of motion of our particles has greatly increased. Now, keep in mind those five postulates uh, or those five stipulations of the kinetic molecular theory is based off of an ideal gas, which is really an imaginary gas that perfectly fits all of those assumptions. But reality check, a real gas is a gas that we see every day all the time that does not behave completely according to the assumptions of the kinetic molecular theory. But even though real gases deviate somewhat from the kinetic molecular theory, the postulates go a long way to describing a lot of the behavior of gases that we observe. However, there are a couple of things to keep in mind in terms of trying to understand when gases will deviate from kinetic molecular theory. The first of which comes down to polarity. The more polar the gas molecules are, the greater the deviation from ideal behavior. Again, your polar molecules are gonna have greater forces of attraction in between the gas molecules, allowing for more deviation from the perfect world of kinetic molecular theory. And two, keep in mind that at really low temperatures and at really high pressures, real gases begin to deviate significantly from ideal behavior because at that point, they begin to approach the liquid phase. The forces of attraction become fairly significant and therefore, the assumptions of the kinetic molecular theory begin to fall apart. So let's go back to our sample of neon gas. If we cool things off, note how some of those assumptions that we just made no longer hold true. There isn't a whole lot of space in between our particles. And while they're still in motion and have kinetic energy, they don't have as much kinetic energy as when they were in the gas phase. Now, similar things will happen when we increase the pressure. Again, we sort of force those particles closer and closer together, which causes them to deviate significantly from their ideal behavior. So, those things said, kinetic molecular theory allows us to explain a lot of behaviors of gases. One, the first thing it explains for us is expansion of gases. Gases do not have a definite shape, nor do they have a definite volume. They completely fill their container. And so, as your container expands, so does your gas. Similarly, gases are compressible. During compression, particles that were very far apart are forced closer together. And we're able to do this with gases because they have a lot of empty space in between the particle. So as you compress your container, you force those gas particles closer and closer together. Kinetic molecular theory also explains the fluid nature of gases. Because the attractive forces between gases is relatively insignificant, gas particles can easily slide past one another. 
Another behavior of gases that's explained using kinetic molecular theory is the low density of gases. Because gas particles are very far apart, their volumes are really large, especially in comparison to their mass, and therefore the density for gases are really low. And then finally, kinetic molecular theory also explains the properties of diffusion and effusion that we see with gases. Diffusion is simply the spontaneous mixing of the particles of two substances caused by their random motion. Here's a thriller of an animation. You probably observe this anytime someone sprays perfume or passes gas. <laughs> Diffusion, why we smell farts. Effusion, on the other hand, is a process by which gas particles pass through a tiny opening. Sounds similar to diffusion, but now we're talking about the movement through a tiny opening. And once they're out, they then diffuse throughout the room. As always, a quick reference to some of the images used in the presentation. Shout out to Tro and those awesome pics. Go to absolute zero!